Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So the name of my channel is going to be Daily Devos. Now I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be Daily Devos as a fact, um, but I'm going to do my due diligence to at least get one video out a week. And we're going to be talking about how um, the word can relate to modern life. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, I decided to start putting it out on YouTube instead of my IGTV. I feel like IGTV isn't something that really reaches out as well. I'm very big on Gary Vee and uh, he says not to curate content on there, but to put content that's already curated. I'm gonna go ahead and start curating my content onto YouTube. I really feel like I'll reach out to more women and men that do watch. So before we get started into today's message, um, I would like to pray really quickly. So if you could please close your eyes, and drop whatever you're doing for just a few seconds. Lord, I ask for every woman and man um, who is watching this video right now to please receive your message. I'm allowing you to work through me so I can provide the word for them. I ask that you please open up their hearts and to help rewrite their stories for some are at rock bottom right now, and for others, they just don't know where to go. Please help them, Lord, and I hope this message does them well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's get into it. So today's message is going to be about tithing. I know it's not a popular topic, okay? Like, we get it. Us, us Christians in the church, at least the good ones, we get it. It's not a popular topic, which is totally understandable. You know, not everybody has money that they can spare and give. Um, however, the Bible says otherwise, so we're going to talk about it. So God put it on my heart last night to really talk about tithing, and he's actually put it in my heart to teach others how to be financially free, which is hilarious because I'm not there yet. <laughs> well, I'll talk about that in another video too, but anyways, just to make a long story short, and I'll give you a little background on myself really quickly. My family, I am the third generation on my mom's father's side in America. My mom's side of the family and my dad's side of the family both are not very good with money. They tried to teach me what they knew and what they thought was best. It didn't stick because they weren't practicing what they were preaching. But because of that, I have no experience with any type of money. I've, all of my experience that I'm learning with money right now was due to failures and now it's due to Chris teaching me how he's doing it. And I'm so blessed to have him in my life for that because otherwise I'd be a little bit more lost, I feel. With tithing, um, you know, it could be a scary word if you're someone like me. And so, you know, my family, you know, we're Hispanic. We lived in California, one of the most expensive states, right, to live in today. And then I moved to New York, which is even way more expensive. And where I lived in Hoboken, not any cheaper, okay? And I had to make almost six figures in order to keep up with that kind of lifestyle, living in, you know, society and the media's way of thinking of how I need to be and be spending my money and because I was so caught up on that and chasing that and making that my idol I failed to learn anything about money that I needed to learn and so God has humbled me by placing me into Hawaii yes I live in Hawaii now and providing me a job that I'm barely busting I think honestly it's probably between thirty five thousand dollars a year or something but anyways so he's humbling me to show me that, you know what, I'm going to give you what you can handle. Because that honestly was a prayer that I prayed. And so he's doing that. Um, so be careful what you ask for. Yeah. I'm really excited to talk about this topic. Tithing is something I do all the time now. It was something I was scared to do because, again, I come from a poor background. We didn't have money in my household. Even today, you know, I have family members still hanging on to every little thing because they just never had an abundance of it, right? And so a tithing, you're supposed to give 10%, right? That's what the Bible says. But you have to look at tithing as God's providing this income to you anyway. So technically it's already his, but it's just God knowing that you're being obedient, which is the biggest thing of all, is you're being obedient to him and to your trusting him. And a lot of people don't do those two things. And this is probably why when you do tithe, your finances aren't doing good. Because when you tithe, you're not buying a miracle. You're not, you know, buying anything 
from God. He already loves you the maximum amount. He can't love you anymore, and he's definitely not going to love you any less. So that's the other way you have to look at it. Um, I want to actually read a verse really quick. If you can just blow off the dust from your Bible, bust that boy out, and if you could turn, please, to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Mine is a EBS, right? EBS, ESV, sorry, a study Bible. So it might sound different in your vision. Just a heads up. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vast will be bursting with fine. Sorry, with wine. <laughs> and other versions, it might say, I can't, I think it's amplified. Honor with, honor God with all of your capital meaning all of your finances. Just to kind of break that down a little bit further, so what that means is all of your capital, right? So every person has a capital of income. So you should be giving from that. You need to be giving from your income and you need to be giving from just any time you get some kind of money, you know, because again, the money is not yours to begin with, it's God's, he's providing it to you. A very good example of this in my testimony. A couple months ago, so when I very first, me and Chris first moved to Hawaii, I, didn't have a job, right? And I needed to make my car, my car payment. My car payment I can't skip because it's through the bank. They won't even work with me. I've tried in the past, it just doesn't happen. So no if, ands, or buts, I have to pay. That's my mob boss on earth. <laughs> and so I pray to God, you know, please help me. I don't know how I'm gonna get the money for this payment. I don't even know if I can make the payment on time. What should I do? Now. Amber's mind said you should move the payment out to a different date and so I was like okay that, yeah that's a good idea because I didn't want to ask my mom I couldn't ask my I couldn't ask my boyfriend he's not my husband it's not my money to be asking and I couldn't get another loan like they're not gonna approve me so what was I about to do so that's my only other option right just to back up a little bit so I had to ship my car over through Matson. it's a big shipping company I'm sure you guys have seen them all over the country they shipped my car and they accidentally bumped the side mirror now when Chris filed the claim it was like about weeks ago because it takes forever for them to process stuff I wasn't expecting the next things to happen I've already been tithing for a few weeks at this point and I was tithing you know just not thinking about it just you know if I got a little third dollar commission check off my Young Living, I was tithing $3. If I received a check from Ebates, because I used to shop on Ebates all the time, I was tithing whatever that 10% was. I was just giving whatever I could. And there was times when Chris would give me some money, I would tithe off of that too. And anytime, because I was like, I need to be faithful in this. It was getting close to my car payment date, which is the 8th of every month. And we got a check in the mail. And it was the check from the Matson company that dings my side mirror. Now, my side mirror is fine. There's a little paint on it. Now they both match because I accidentally scraped one side one time long years ago. But it doesn't bother me to the point where I feel I have to fix it now because, yes, the outside appearance of your car is important. However, at the time, I needed that money for my payment. And God came through and provided with me with that check. So I took that check and paid my car payment. And hallelujah, car payment's been on time to this date since I bought it. Like, I've never been late on a car payment. And I'm so proud of myself for that, by the way. But you see what I mean, how God comes through and provides. Because I'm giving him all of my capital. And I feel like that's kind of where people get a little misconstrued. Again, I'm not buying miracles. When I tithe, I'm not expecting for things to automatically, like tomorrow, changes. Like, yes, we live in a world that's like this, but that doesn't mean that that's how God works. Again, this is a walk with Him, and I'm a baby Christian still. It's gonna be, it's gonna be years maybe before I get to the point where I want to be. But I am so thankful I'm not where I used to be a year ago. I can tell you that much. So, just have faith and. Again, one, I'm being obedient when I tithe. So yesterday, here's another little story. Yesterday, when we were at church, I was gonna give uh, my 10% because I do thrift uh, selling on the side. My point being is I was gonna give the 10% of that, which $15 I made, I'm gonna give God $5. 
and when I got to church I wrote out the the tithing for the five dollars and as we were praising and worshiping I heard a little voice saying you need to give me all that money and I was like what <laughs> so I'm not good with money I'm learning and I'm going to teach you guys how to be better with it we're all gonna learn together that's what's gonna be fun about this um, so I literally have negative $35 right now no sorry negative four almost 400 yeah because the bill cleared and I don't have any money to cover it it's so sad but my pride I'm giving it to you God I don't have pride left so I we I will be as open and transparent with you guys as possible and I'm a poor youtuber go figure right YouTube's free and so anyways I gave the rest of my money as an offering to the church and now I'm just being obedient to God I don't know what's gonna come of that I don't know if I'm gonna get like a promotion I don't know if I'm gonna get more money I don't know what's gonna happen all I know is that for sure my next check I'm gonna be able to pay my bills on time and two is again because I'm being obedient God's gonna somehow provide this all back to me it might not be tomorrow it might not be in a month it might not be in a year okay because again this is a process it, but I know it's gonna all come full circle and I feel we live in such a world again where everything's so fast like you want things instantly that your patience is like zero and that's not how God works okay God kind of works like a diet you know if you're good on your diet you're gonna lose the weight you're gonna get to your end goal if you're not and you don't want to wait and you do whatever you want you eat whatever you want you miss your workouts you're digging your own ditch okay so that's kind of how God works too so I can't encourage you guys enough to just be obedient and tithe. You know, and God doesn't care how much you give. You think the church cares how much you give? They don't care, okay? As long as you have a good Bible-based church, as Joel Olstein says, they only care is that you're being obedient to God. They don't care if you're giving them a penny. They don't care if you're giving them a dollar. They don't care. They just want you to be obedient to God. And for me, there's a lot of times I give $3 or $2. There's some days where I can give more. You know, I think the most amount of money I've given so far is $100. But I know that this is an investment in myself through the bank of Jesus. And it sounds silly, but it's true. And that's kind of how you have to look at it. So if you take anything away from this, um, you know, just know that tithing is being obedient. And also tithing is showing faith. Because when you're tithing as well you're showing good faith to God that you trust him enough with your money and money is a type form of energy that us humans really hold on to right like nobody messes around with a money figure and for you to be obedient and trusting with that it's showing a lot a lot about you and your heart and God loves that he wants you to want him and for me you know I would rather give my money to my church knowing that they're gonna outreach to other people you know and they're gonna do great things with this money it's not just gonna go to the pastor's salary or whatever it's going to go for good causes and I trust that and I feel like people focus too much on that and they don't realize that that's not what it's about like yes on earth that's what it's about but spiritually it's so much more and we can't always focus on the physical and that's one of the biggest problems I was having before and I strongly feel that that's why God moved me to Hawaii because he wanted to show me that I need to have more faith in him and just to really learn more about myself as a Christian and as a spiritual person you know I lost my walk with him and I have it back you know you can go off of the trail and get lost in the woods but he'll bring you back to the path that you need to be on you just have to let him it's like you know just picture yourself like walking off into the forest and then you hear someone calling you but you don't know which way to go right that was me and I found his voice I found found walked home back and you know the path is narrow and that's totally fine you know I want to be close to Jesus I want to hold his hand everywhere I go and part of that is offering my money to him and so just really take that into consideration with everything you know 
I understand if you're married, talk to your spouse about it, that this is something you feel strongly that you want to do and that, you know, encourage them to do it as well if they're not already. And, you know, just go from there and walk with faith and walk with obedience because that is the key and the ticket to opening your heart and having God change your story. So I hope you guys got a good message out of this. Um, I'm just going to wrap this up here. You know, this is one verse. I'm going to talk more about money. You know, again, I want to learn this together with everyone. And hey, who knows? Maybe I'll be a financial whatever. I have no idea. But what I can tell you is that I know God put it on my heart to serve other people. It's always been my favorite thing to do, whether it's helping them physically or emotionally, whatever, encouraging them. I didn't know what it was. I love to sew. I'm not sure if that's going to be it, but I can promise you one day I'm going to have t-shirts out and they're going to be awesome. But yes, things are going to happen, okay? So just have some faith. If you're praying for that miracle because you have a huge bill you can't pay, pray about it. Pray to God, but also be faithful in your tithe. You know, again, you're investing in the bank of Jesus. I don't know how much better it gets than that. So. Thanks again, you guys. Have a blessed day in whatever it is else that you have to do today. And I'll see you in the next video. Feel free to leave me comments. I'll leave my email. You can email me personally. Um, one thing I definitely want to get into is answering questions for people that maybe you don't know, you know the answers to because your walk is new. Or maybe your walk has been for a while, but you got lost in the forest like I did. You know, Reach out. I love it. So I love you guys. Take care. And again, have a blessed day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.